How do I get my kids to brush their teeth? Open wide. Okay, so at least once a week, someone will write to me, my kid refuses to brush their teeth. What do I do? And I wanna to say to you that if your kids brush their teeth like a Swiss train, that's great, but this video is still relevant for you. You'll see why. Hey, are you ready to love parenting and parent from love? Then slam that subscribe button and hit the notification bell because I want to meet up with you here every single Monday. The Parenting Junkie. I'm a Vital, I'm a mindful parenting coach, I'm the mother of four, and I'm on a mission to help everybody reclaim presence, peace, and play for their families. And I hope that you will do that with me here right now. Now, today I'm gonna to be giving you 10 creative ways of helping your children to brush their teeth. Ready to brush some teeth? Slam on that like button and let's get started. Number one, model. This is always my go-to parenting trick because it works so well. Children and particularly toddlers are designed to mimic what they see. And that's why if you're yelling, bribing and punishing, they will mimic that. But if you're working with them and modeling good behavior, they'll mimic that. Model brushing your teeth. Often children don't see us brush our teeth because we do so at a different time. So grab your toothbrush, have your child grab their toothbrush and show them how it's done. It's super fun. They will naturally use their mirror neurons in their brains to mimic you and they'll get their teeth brushed. Easy. Number two, use music. Music is highly motivating and there are some great songs out on YouTube about brushing their teeth. Maybe it's with one of their favorite characters who brush their teeth. Brushy brush the left and brush, brush, brush. Brushy brush the right and right. Brush, brush, brush. Using popular media, popular music, and a nice beat to go with the teeth brushing can really motivate children to get on that bandwagon and feel like it's fun. Now brace yourself for a masterpiece and I'll share the song that I made out for my children about teeth brushing. Brushy 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 brush brushy brushy brush brushy brushy brush 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 brushy brush brushy brushy brush 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 brushy brush brushy brushy brush I'm so sorry if I cracked some glass in your house right now. Number three, use a timer. Not so long ago, one of our dentists gave us a little sand timer and it has been so great and helpful. And since then we've started using the, the kitchen oven timer because it makes it a little bit gamified, like, okay, I know I have to get through this time and it gets you used to doing a full two minute brush or whatever your dentist recommends. Number four is to count their teeth like at the dentist. You could pretend that you're the dentist and that they're at the dentist and this will actually prepare them for a dentist visit as well, so that's helpful too. But say, oh, can I see how many teeth you have? One, two, three, as you brush their teeth. Little children, especially toddlers, seem to love counting. Number five, as you brush their teeth for them, you could kind of try and guess all the things that they've eaten that day. Toddlers love this game. So you're brushing their teeth and you say, oh, I see that you had some broccoli and I see that you must have had some pasta and I see that you ate a fire truck today. And then they're like, no, no, I didn't eat a fire truck. Ha 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 And you have this whole game that while you're brushing their teeth, you're kind of going on an archeological thing to find out what they had for breakfast, lunch, and supper and slipping in some silly ones in the middle too to get them laughing. Number six. Challenge them. Toddlers and kids love it when adults play the mumbling, stumbling adult who doesn't know what to do, who's clueless, right? So become contrarian or, or challenge them or be playful in some other way. For example, you could say, Brushing teeth? No, why would you need to brush your teeth? You shouldn't brush your teeth, that's disgusting. I think stinky brown teeth are much nicer. You don't want to get them all shiny and white, do you? Ew, you're brushing them. Ew, stop brushing them. Yuck. Ew, toothpaste. Oh my god, white teeth. I can't even. That's disgusting. Oh. Hey, what's this toothbrush for? I've never seen one of these. Does it go in your ear? Does it go up your nose? How do you use this thing? Can you show me? Whoa, you are blinding me with that brilliance of your white shiny teeth. My goodness, I can't even look at you. You're so shiny. Whoa. I won't allow you to brush your teeth. Whoever brushes their teeth is going to make me very, very mad. I'll be so mad that I will just explode. Is this all making sense for you? And can you see how you can apply this to other limits as well? If so, I would love to hear in the comments below. Give me a love if this is helpful and let me know how you're going to apply this. Number seven, role play. Have your children brush your teeth. 
and then you brush their teeth. Take turns or role play with a doll where they brush the doll's teeth. Just walking them through it on someone else rather than having it done to them can help them to externalize the experience, get the concept of it, understand it, see it, process it, and become in control. When children feel like you are shoving a toothbrush in their mouth and you're gonna get them with it, say, ah, then they have resistance because obviously none of us would like that. If someone was coming up to us and sticking something in our mouth like that, it feels overpowering. But if you empower them with the toothbrush, show them what the process is, allow them to do it to you, even out that power a little bit, then they're much more likely to cooperate and allow you to do it to them as well. Number eight is to explain it. Now, this doesn't work for very young children, in my opinion, but as children grow older, if there's any resistance to any hygiene rituals, then explaining why in short language, you know, really succinctly, don't give them a lecture, can be helpful. For my older children who maybe were getting a bit reluctant or a bit lazy about teeth brushing, I've shown them pictures of what are the consequences of not brushing your teeth. And when they see that teeth can really rot and it does really hurt and it does look really awful, then they're motivated. They get it. I need, I need white teeth. Wait. Number nine is to simply hold a firm but empathic limit. Look, sometimes you don't have a playful bone in your body. You're dog tired and you just can't get it together. Sometimes you've tried all sorts of different things, you've been inconsistent, there have been power struggles and you just need your child to do something. And sometimes that means just holding a limit and kind of saying, baby, now's teeth brushing time. We cannot move on to books until this gets done. And just staying in that spot, staying in that discomfort until it gets done. Sometimes this might provoke a tantrum a big meltdown or a big show of feelings, crying. And I just want to say, that's a good thing. That means that you're holding a limit and your child is using it as a safe space to express their feelings and let them out. So rather than saying, you shouldn't be crying about this, it's just teeth brushing, realize the crying isn't about that. The crying is about other stored emotions and the fact that they're now hearing, uh, you must do something and a no and we're not getting the book until you finish brushing your teeth means that they have an opportunity to safely let out some feelings. So let them go through the whole entire cry, but stay with the idea that we are not moving on until this gets done. And I'm here, I love you, I realize you don't wanna brush your teeth, we can't move on to anything else until this gets done. This isn't right for all parents and all children, but if you can hold that space empathically, somewhat peacefully, not get overly involved or enmeshed or try and fix it for your child and let them have their feelings out, and if your child is the type of child who needs that, then it can actually be really helpful. I have one kid that's like that, that needs to just have a good cry and then they can move on and brush their teeth. This shouldn't be happening every night or every morning or whatever, but from time to time, if there's pushback about little power struggles like that, sometimes it's because children need the limit. They need to have what Dr. Laura Markham calls a scheduled meltdown. And number 10 is just a pro tip for you, which is to have a set of toothbrushes wherever is most useful for you. In present play, we call this strewing for flow, leaving things out in a way that helps you with your goals, such as brushing your children's teeth. If they are in an upstairs bathroom, for example, but you need to get out the door, then maybe you're missing teeth brushing because you haven't set up your home and your design in accordance to your needs. So have a set of toothbrushes in the kitchen, for example, or by the front door or whatever it is that works for you. We have one in the kitchen and in the upstairs bathroom, and that way, when they go into bed at night, we can brush our teeth. We do so in the bath, during bath time, or uh, we have it in the kitchen when we're ready to leave the house. That's a perfect place for us to do it just after we've finished having breakfast. So set yourself up, and I like to include a little mirror, a little cheap plastic mirror on a stand that children can look at themselves while they're doing it. It helps them to get it right, to make sure that they're getting to the back sections of their teeth, etc. Now this strewing can go on to include having your timer, having a little bowl with dental floss uh, available for children and that kind of thing. Whatever you need to do during that teeth brushing time, go for it. Now I will just say that some of my Instagram folks said that having an electric toothbrush changed the game for them with their kids. So maybe that's something that would work for you as well.
Toothbrushing is a perfect example of a limit where we can't really allow for natural consequences. If our children don't brush their teeth over months and months, then their teeth will rot. And that will be our responsibility as the adults who knew better and should have done better by our children. So I just want to give you a quick summary of what we spoke about and you can apply this to any other limit. So one is doing it first, mirroring the behavior that you want to teach. Two is singing a song using popular media to tell the story and making it fun. Three is using a timer together, saying this is the time that we're going to be doing it for and watching it visually to help move along that behavior. Four, five, six, and seven were all to use playfulness in order to get this behavior done. So doing it on a doll, counting their teeth, recalling everything they're eating, or becoming a mumbling, stumbling adult who doesn't know how it's done. Can you show me how teeth brushing is done? Number eight was using logic and explaining the consequences of not brushing your teeth. And number nine was if all else fails, or even not if all else fails, just holding a firm limit and not moving on until this gets done. And number 10 was a tip to set yourself up for success by strewing the right things that you need in the right places. Sometimes things don't get done because they're not easily accessible. Now, before we move on, if this was helpful for you or could be helpful for anyone that you know, please share it with them, tag them over on Instagram, I just want to shout out to everyone over on Instagram stories. I posted a story a while ago asking people, how do you get your child to brush their teeth? And I got so many great responses from you guys, which I have incorporated into this video. So this is totally a crowdsourced video of parenting advice. And I would love to see you over on Instagram. Follow me at Parenting Junkie and you can DM me over there. Interact with my stories. I would love to get to know you better. If you want even more help and support from a like-minded community of peaceful parents, then join my Facebook group, Love Parenting with Avital. I would love to welcome you in there. Now, slam on that subscribe button because next week, here's what's coming. I'm gonna give you an updated tour of our playroom, especially the changes I've made to make my six month old welcome whilst not disrupting the play of my older children. I hope you're gonna find this helpful. See you next week.